In our last tutorial, we created a bullet and then we gathered input from our space bar to then fired that bullet towards the enemy. And we also created some sound. So that was fun. Now, what are we gonna be doing in this video? Well, we're gonna go ahead and start taking a look at allowing those enemies to be killed by those bullets. So we're gonna create an event trigger. We're also going to create a particle effect that is the enemy ship blowing up. And we're also gonna create some sound for that as well. Hey, I'm Jerry from Blizz Studio, creator of the Apple featured game, Trixel Rocket. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and that bell icon when you know when the next video is available. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Cool, so we have a ship that fires a bullet. We need to take that bullet now and be able to blow up the enemy with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a, a sound of an explosion. So I'm gonna go to my BFXR tool for that. And again, one of the options here is explosion. You could probably find an explosion sound online or you can create it yourself like I showed in the last tutorial. But I wanna just use this one. So I'm gonna hit this several times and each time it generates a different sound. And that one's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this into my project. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and call this enemy explosion. Cool, done. So that should pop in and yes, it did. All right, so now we're ready to kind of get started with the main meat of this. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by making the camera have uh, and its own FSM so that we can call to it to make it shake anytime we need. So I need to go ahead and click on the main camera. And the reason, the reason I'm setting up an FSM on the camera is that anytime that we need a shake, I'm gonna go ahead and have this already set up so that we can just call to it and say, hey, camera shake, camera shake medium, camera shake small, camera shake big. And that way it's already set up and we can just call to it anytime we need to. All right, so what we're gonna do is we need to create an FSM. So add FSM to my main camera. And first we wanna make sure we name our FSMs. I haven't been very good at that. So uh, right now, by default, it names the FSM as FSM, but we can't really know exactly which one, and you can have multiple FSMs attached to your objects. So in this one, we wanna go ahead and just call this camera shake. That way we know which, what it's meant to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the start state as it is. It's kind of like an idle state. So let's go ahead and maybe just name it idle. And we're not gonna do anything with that. So I'm also gonna create three more states. One for small shake, one for big shake, and one for medium shake. So let's go ahead and just create those states real quick. So I'll call this first one as shake small. And then I'll have an F or I'll have a state for shake medium. And I'll also have a state for shake big. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then I also need to create events for these. So just like start is an event, we want to have an event for shake small, shake medium, shake big. That way we can call to those events from other Playmaker FSMs. So we need to click on the event tab and we're gonna go ahead and just add those real quick. So we'll go shake small. Then we need to go ahead and add one for shake medium. And then one more for shake big. Cool, and you can have a number of these. But in this, in this case, we're just gonna do the three. So I need to add a global event. So just like start is a global event. So you wanna have each of these states have a global event. 
So in this case, we're gonna add a global transition and you can see here's those three events that I created. So here's small, medium, and big. So I'm gonna click on small for the small and then do the same thing for the medium and the big. So that way now we can, from a, an external FSM, we can call to our camera to do something. Now we haven't added the shake to these yet, so they're just blank states. So let's go ahead and add a shake position. And I'll add that in there. And I need to say, yes, we're gonna use the owner. I need to go ahead and put the numbers in. So I'm gonna use the shake small as like the firing. That was a very small little shake. So we did 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then the time was I think 0.1. And we want to turn off loop, don't finish. Okay, so then once we've done that, we need to go ahead and set the same thing up for the medium and the big. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm just gonna copy this action and just paste it into these other two. So paste action, paste action, and then I can set up what those numbers are. So in the case of the medium, I'm gonna do a 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for the X and Y. So that's how many units it's shaking. And then the duration, let's change that to 0.3. And then for the big, I'm gonna do that 0.5. And we can always change these numbers later on if they don't look exactly the way we want them to be. But I think that looks pretty good. So now we've set up this global FSM for our camera so that we can call to these actions or the call to these events anytime we need to. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go to our uh, enemy. And we're gonna open up our enemy FSM. So we have that event set up. Now we need to make sure that we're detecting the bullet, okay? So instead of the destroyer, we don't wanna detect the bullet. And then we're gonna send that to another state, not the destroyer state, not the destroy self state, but a different state that's going to accomplish a couple of different things for us. So first we need to detect bullet. So I'm gonna detect a tag of bullet. And if you don't have that set up, you can go to your bullet prefab and then add a tag and then you can uh, click the plus and add bullet. I've already done that, so I'm gonna go back to my enemy uh, FSM here real quick. And so we want to detect the tag of bullet. So anytime a bullet has hit the enemy, we want to then go to a different state. So let's go ahead and add a new state. So we're gonna add state and we'll call this blow, oops, blow up enemy. Okay, so we have that state in there. We need to also add an event for this. So I'm gonna go to event and blow up enemy. And we need to add that as a transition. So I need to then go to blow up enemy. Okay, and then the event, we need to go to blow up enemy. So if, we, if the bullet touches our enemy character, we need to then go to that transition so we're doing blow up enemy and that transition is gonna go up to the blow up enemy state. Okay, so now we need to figure out what we wanna do in this. So one is we wanna play the audio that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that in first. So enemy explosion. And we wanna add audio and play the audio that we just dragged in there. So enemy explosion, cool. And let's give this a test real quick to see if this works. And it's not. So it's telling me that something's not right. And my guess is that in the bullet, we don't have a collider. So if you click on the bullet, uh, if so if you click on the bullet prefab, you can see that we have a rigid body 2D attached, but we don't have a box collider. So if we don't have a collider, then there's no way for those two to detect each other. So we need to go ahead and add a collider. So we're gonna click on add component box collider 2d and we want this to be a trigger yes so that's detecting if the the box collider of the bullet and the box collider of the enemy have touched each other then we can uh, trigger an event so let's go back to our enemy and so we're detecting that and hopefully that should play the the sound now There we go. Cool. 
So that worked. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we created that, we created that camera shake and we want to then call to the camera to say, hey, do a medium shake. So the first thing that we need to do, because the enemy is a prefab, it's not going to know where the camera is in the scene because it, you could have a prefab in different scenes and all over the place. So we need to be able to detect what the main camera is. So in this case, I want to, I'm going to click on camera and here we go. There's an option for get main camera. So we want to get main camera. And then it's saying, hey, we need to store this game object, uh, a name of that game object. So we're going to create a new variable. So we're getting the name of the camera, and then we're going to store it in a variable. And I'm just going to call this main camera. So that way, anytime any of these are in the scene, it's saying, hey, where's the main camera? And then now we can actually call to it with an FSM. So let's go to... It's easier for me to just find this in state machine. We're going to send an event to that state machine. So we can send event by name. Okay, so let's drag that in. And we want to call to a game objects FSM. So it's not this FSM. It's not the, the enemy. It's the camera that we want to send an FSM to. And the game object is not the owner. We want to specify the game object. And it's saying, hey, what, what game object do you want to? Well, I can't drag the main camera in here, um, but that's why we did the get, get main camera. And if we click on the variable button here, went to get the name of the camera and we're storing that in a variable. So here we go. We've got main camera as an option. And boom, it's saying, hey, get the main camera, store it in this variable. Now we're saying, Hey, get the main camera and now send an event. And the event that we want to send is, let's go back to our main camera real quick. And I want to do a shake medium. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that name. Go back to my enemy, my blow up enemy. I want to send the event name of shake medium. And hopefully if we did this right, it should play the sound. All right, so let's give this a test real quick and see if we've got things working. Oop, it looks like I, I hit the enemy and then now my character is just like flying off the screen. So that's telling me that I've got something wrong. And I think what the problem is is that I have two camera shakes playing. I've got one that's attached to the camera when the enemy is destroyed, and then one that's the ship firing. And because those are playing at the same time, it doesn't know which to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the, uh, go back to my main scene, I'm gonna go to my rocket. And here we've got in our create bullet, we're doing a shake, right? So it's a minimal shake. So let's go ahead and remove this and what we're going to do is, as opposed to doing the shake here, we're going to call to that minimal shake, that small shake that's on the camera. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to remove this component. And then I'm going to, let's see, go back to send event by name. So again, we have that uh, event set up. So I'm going to go to object FSM and specify game object. Here we don't have a variable set up because that variable was attached to a different F FSM. And we're gonna do this the same way we did before. So what we're gonna do is to get main camera. So I have that here and I'm gonna set up a new variable for that as main camera, just like we did with the other FSM. And then here we can call that main camera using our variable, so main camera. And then we're going to call shake small. And hopefully I spelled that right. Let's go, yeah, shake small. Let's just copy and paste that just to make sure that we have that right. So shake small. Yep, we did. Cool. All right, so now we're calling the, the FSM that's in, on the camera to do the shake. Okay, so hopefully that eliminates that problem of our ship kind of flying off the, the screen. <laughs> And that did, that did fix that problem. Cool. So let's go back to our enemy. 
and go into our blow up enemy. So we have the audio playing, we're getting the main camera, send an event to the main camera for the big shake. And now we need to create a particle effect. So let's go ahead and add a particle effect to the enemy. So I'm gonna select in the hierarchy the enemy and effect particle system. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and have this, like when it plays, go boom, right? So the thing that we're going to do is the duration. I'm going to have this down small, so maybe one second, maybe 1.5. Again, these numbers you can kind of play with over time. Uh, we do not want this to be looping, but I'm going to turn that off later so we can see, you know, as we're building it, what's happening. Uh, start lifetime. This is the lifetime of each of the individual particles. So I'm going to go ahead and do a random between two constants. And let's just say 0.3 to point uh, to 1. So 1.3 or 0.3 to 1. All right, so the start speed, I think the start speed is fine. Let's go start size. Let's go ahead and change that to a random between two constants again. Uh, 0.2 to 0.5 maybe. And maybe a little bit bigger, 0.8. Okay, that's not too bad, so it's a little wider range. And then start color, again, I'm gonna, I really like the random between two of whatever. So in this case, two colors. I'm gonna choose one that's kind of a little more on the red side, and then one that's a little more on the yellow side, because then it'll give me from yellow to orange, or from yellow to red, which gives orange in there too. So it's giving me those particle different colors. Simulation space is local is fine. Uh, the next thing I want to do is emission. So here, emission, I don't want this to just generate 10, 10 particles over every second. I want there to just to be a big a burst. So you can see that we have the option for burst right here. So I'm going to change the over time to zero. So it's not going to generate any except for the one burst. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a burst. And then it's saying how many particles you want to create. In this case, let's say maybe 100. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So that works for me. And we only want there to be one cycle of it. So it's just going to play once. And then I think everything looks good. Let's go to one more thing, and that is to color over lifetime. So let's check that box. And I want these to fade out. So over the life cycle of the particle, I want it to go from 100% opaque to 100% transparent. So the top little tag up there is alpha, the transparency. I'm gonna take that down to zero. And right now they're kind of fading out fairly quickly. So I'm gonna take the first little tag and bring that a little bit further. So that way the color stays opaque for the life of it, except for just maybe the last third. And then it, then it kind of fades out. I think that's pretty good. So boom, that works. All right, so let's turn off looping because we only want this to play once. And then I'm also gonna turn the particle system off. So we're gonna have that um, be off. And then when we turn it on, we want it to play, okay? So again, we want that particle system to be off. Let's go back to our enemy FSM and blow up enemy, we want to play that particle system. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn that object on. And when it turns on, it's automatically going to play. So let's activate. So here we go, activate game object. So what that does is clicks that little button on. So activate game object. So we're going to put that in our event system here too. So activate game object. We don't want it to be the owner, we want it to be the specific game object, and that game object is the particle system that we have set up. And then if this is checked, that means turn it on. If it's unchecked, it means turn it off. So we can turn this, we can use this event for both turning on and turning off objects. So in this case, we want to turn it on. And then there we go. So let's give this a test and see how that works. Boom, that's working. Um, I do notice that the ship is continuing to move down 
and the particle system with it. So we definitely do need to take our particle system and change that from local space to world space. That way the particles stay on the screen where they were blown up at. So let's try that real quick. Yeah, there we go. But we see that our little ship continues to move. Okay, so what we need to do is to then go back to our enemy FSM. What I'm gonna do is to take the enemy game object, the sprite renderer, and change that sprite to be none. So it's actually just turning off the sprite. So the enemy is still there. It's just gonna turn off the sprite. So let's go ahead and drag sprite renderer down into our list here of events. And it's saying, hey, what do you want to do? Get property, set property. So we're going to set property. And then it's saying, hey, what property do you want to set? I want to choose to take the sprite. And this is off screen for you. And there we go. I, I am taking the sprite. And because I don't put anything in here, it's turn, effectively just turning it off. It's making it invisible. And so hopefully that should work for turning off that sprite. So let's give that a test. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Okay, and there we go, that actually works. That's exactly what it is we're, we're trying to accomplish. So what have we done? We have gone and uh, created in this state, we have played the audio, we've got the main camera name, we've sent an event to that camera, which is shaking the camera, we've activated the particle system, and then we've also turned off the sprite for that enemy. And then the last thing we need to do is destroy the enemy. So we've played the audio, we've got the camera, we've set the, sent an event to the main camera, we've activated the particle system, we've set the sprite to be zero, and then let's go ahead and destroy self. So we already have destroy self set up right here, and we can go ahead and just to add a transition of finished. So once it's doing all of those different things, then just go to destroy self. And then in destroy self, we have the destroy self action. And then that should be exactly what we need. So let's click play. Yeah, there we go. Boom. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. And this is really awesome. It's fun and it's, it's, it's engaging and I'm excited. This is another exciting tutorial. We allowed our bullet to connect with the enemy. We then had an FSM, the enemy FSM do a trigger event, go to a state that said, hey, we're going to, when it does connect with the bullet, we're going to blow up the enemy ship. We're going to add a shake and send that FSM to connect with another FSM that does the camera shake. We created a particle effect. We made our enemy get destroyed and we did quite a bit. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna put a UI on the screen that's going to show the score every time we hit the enemy. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and that bell icon when you know when the next video is available. Until next time, Keep creating.